Let's take a look. Vikings Strike Throw Mix and her Tether are both very good, but in certain matchups, you probably don't want to apply the Tether. The Temkin being an obvious example of this, but you still want to land throw. Obviously, Strike Throw Mix, she's very good at us. So a way that you can get around not using Tether is by holding the throw button. This will still allow you to do the throw, but it won't apply the Tether. So when you're in a matchup that doesn't favor using Tether, you can avoid using it entirely. Vikings parry is particularly powerful because you can use the RC system to option select using it in the same way you could option select throw when the game first launched. If you haven't been playing since launch and you don't know what this is, basically when you throw, you would mash RC. If the throw connected, the animation would cancel out the RC. If it didn't, you would get PRC and keep yourself safe. It was basically a way to guarantee essentially that whenever you went for a throw, you wouldn't get punished while still maintaining the ability to get the reward from the throw if it connected. The ability to option select from throw was later patched out in one of the early updates, but now it's back in a sense in Biken's parry allowing you to basically use her parry for free without risk of punishment when you have 50 meter. Nobody's really doing this at the moment from what I can see, but once people figure it out, it's going to be very strong and very obnoxious to deal with. Just like throw was when you could option select that. Vikings parry is a frame 1 reversal, which means that you can use it to exploit gaps in your opponent's pressure strings. Keep in mind though, Vikings parry has a 6 frame window to catch the opponent's attacks. So if your opponent's combo strings or block strings leave gaps that are bigger than 6 frames, the parry will have to be manually timed. If your opponent does stagger pressure that leaves 7 frame gaps or bigger, you will again have to manually time the parry. Because of this, it's probably more difficult for new players to use the parry than it is a regular DP, because it's more timing specific, I feel, but it is still a very powerful option once you get the hang of it. But much like the DP, you're going to have to figure out where the gaps are in your opponent's pressure, as well as what their stagger pressure is to use it effectively. Just be careful when you use it, because if you mash it instead of trying to time it, you leave yourself open to getting counter hit. Faust's closest into 6HS leaves such a massive gap that if Viking doesn't manually time the parry to catch the 6HS, she will be counter hit. From this, Faust can get a thrust combo, which is one of his most highest damaging combos he can get. This is just one example of a situation where you have to manually time the parry. If you mash it, you will get punished really, really badly against certain characters. Using parry and timing it effectively is going to vary wildly depending on the character you're fighting. You're going to have to spend a lot of work labbing this stuff out to get the best use out of it, but overall parry is very strong once you start using option select and you get an idea of the timing window. A lot of characters in this game are going to have a very, very hard time dealing with Biken's parry once you get good with it, so it is definitely worth the time investment if you plan on maining Biken. The last tip I will offer in this video is for new players who might be struggling to do the instant overhead from Vikings, Closes and her 5k. I think it's, uh, what's it called? Yozansen, I think it's called. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but uh, yeah, that one, the overhead. The move is already relatively easy to do for new players since it's only a quarter circle forward. But if you're having difficulties doing it consistently, you can use this technique to try and improve that. Instead of doing jump and then quarter circle forward, try combining both inputs together. So quarter circle forward into jump and then hit slash. The timing window on the slash button is quite generous overall, so it's not super difficult to do and it makes it way more consistent. I prefer to hold nine after I've done the quarter circle forward, so I do a forward jump. This can reduce the chance of the overhead missing, particularly on small characters who have very, very small hurt boxes when they crouch, so Faust, Jack or are probably the two best examples of this. It might take some getting used to the input, but it's a relatively simple one to do once you get the hang of it. 
It's also a very useful technique to know in general because there are several characters in the game who can benefit from this. Even if you find the overhead easy to do, this technique is still worth learning because it's universal, it doesn't just work in Strive, it works in other games as well. And it can make tricky to do inputs a lot easier. It works on Bikens Parry in this game, it works on Faust's Love Bag. There are other characters it works on, but off the top of my head I can't think of any. So give it a try, see if you like it. It is generally worth learning, and it's not particularly difficult to learn. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video, just some basic tips to help new players as they try to learn a new character, since it can be quite tricky at times. I'm having difficulty myself, honestly. I keep doing item toss with Biken, even though she doesn't have item toss, so I get parry when I don't want it. It's really frustrating. Gotta get that muscle memory out of my system when I play Biken. So yeah, I, uh, I hope this helps. But with that being said, if you need any more information about what I've shown in this video, Leave a comment and I'll try to help you out. I hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching. Take care.